So I think we start off with the fact that you should be aware that Silent Technologies looks to be a listing in the market. So for those who aren't aware who Silo, Na Silo Nanotechnologies is, it's a car battery provider and manufacturer. They're an electronics company offering new battery materials chemistry. They work with leading consumer electronics, automotive OEMs, helping accelerate product roadmaps, partners with battery manufacturers, commercial cell production. The company was founded in 2011, headquartered in California, United States. Silent Nanotechnologies is the reason why we will have 1 million mile batteries. Let's go to understand who Silent te Silo Technologies is. So this is an, an old article. Silent Technologies, July 2019 article in Forbes. He was Tesla's employee number seven, and now he's built a billion-dollar business that makes your phone or car run longer. So even in 2019, there were already a lot of companies that already invested heavily into Silent Technologies. Why do you think Gene Berdyshevsky, who is an early team member in Tesla, has built his own unicorn startup, Silent Nanotechnologies, and why was it valued over a billion, two billion dollars when we even get listed this year? So um, it will always be the company that will fuel everything that you will drive all over, not just in the road, but even on air. So recently, he appeared as a guest on the Dealmakers podcast. And during this interview, he shared his journey, building his first solar car, how he's been raising hundreds of millions of dollars, and why it's growing at an incredible pace. Thousands of miles, designing your own education, he was born in Ukraine. He spent time in Russia. He even lived in the North Arctic Circle for five years, all before becoming uh, in Richmond, California, in Virginia, attending college in California. Gene was fortunate to grow up in an entrepreneurial family, seeing his father start his own small business. Both of his parents were software engineers working on nuclear sub submarines. One thing he said was, I definitely wasn't going to be a software engineer, but I enjoyed math and science a lot, which made me study mechanical engineering. So with his first year in Stanford, he got involved in his very first solar car project. Students were competing, building a solar-powered car, racing it across the country from Chicago to Los Angeles. Gene's team built the car chassis from scratch, building a carbon fiber body, powering it with a battery with about the same strength as a toaster in your kitchen. And that was it. He fell in love with energy, solving problems, building tools, and really got energized building something from the ground up. And so he went on getting a master's in energy engineering from Stanford. And there really wasn't such a program during that time. So he put his own curriculum. All of you know that Tesla launched a rocket ship like SpaceX. Elon Musk didn't have uh, uh, how to launch your own spaceship uh, 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 above Earth. There's no manual for that. So you got to really invent and learn and study physics, quantum mechanics. And in his case, he had to study it the same way. Semiconductor physics, quantum mechanics, and solar. Many people are struggling with this decision to university. So why go and even create your studies when you can piece everything you want to know together online these days is what Gene Berdyshevsky is saying. As with any many high successful startup founders who have come from Stanford, they do believe that only the network that they gain access to is the one that's valuable. So he does credit the value of learning from your peers there. Take note that a lot of these Harvard or Scylla or, uh, or these uh, Stanford, MIT, they usually don't even finish their school there. They just meet and then they drop out. They build their own unicorn valuations. They meet the Peter Thiel, who will just fund it. Now, at the end of your junior year, Gene became the seventh Tesla employee as a tech lead for battery system architectural development. It's no secret that there were plenty of challenges for Tesla, and they started out literally super gluing laptop batteries together just to make the battery pack. Then with safety, the main concern, avoiding random failures, they happen in batteries. Even being rare, when you're using 10,000 batteries to run a single vehicle, you really have to expect this to happen and preempt that. Tesla grew from just 10 people from when Berdyshevsky started there to around 300 when he left. About 30% in uh, about 30 times increase in just four years. Tesla today has over 50,000 employees. And of course, you know the story. Tesla's now what? $800 billion? 20x. Uh, I mean, it's a thousand X. Like if you had entered 10 years ago, then it was about 
$17 IPO, it's now $4,000. Just do the math. $17,000 is $4 million. All right. So his biggest lesson from Tesla as a startup founder was when you want to go after really big problems, uh, ironically, it's easier to really solve a big problem than a small one. It enables you to attract incredible talent and then incredibly rewarding and reduces your competition. Now, if you're going to solve a problem, solve very huge problems, solve very huge TAMs, total addressable market, and be the only one who can solve that problem, therefore, you can be hundreds of billions of dollars or even a trillion dollar ecosystem. Now, from Tesla, what is it that you're willing to do? The world doesn't think that's impossible. You need to have a culture of self-reliance, willing to do a lot of things in-house. So Gene says that his brain was, how do I start my company? How do I build something like this? He, he had this stint with Sutter Hill Ventures. He understood the VC lens, identify entrepreneurs with great distribution, great products, and and therefore, he felt that the next big thing wasn't about the vehicles, but what was inside the vehicle, which is batteries. So fully compatible with his years of experience in Tesla, Gene and his co-founder co Alex started out with Sutter Hill and Matrix being their Series A leads. So uh, both of them continued investing A, B, C, D, E, F. And of course, Silas' most recent funding round was $170 million led by Daimler. Those who don't know who Daimler is, Mercedes-Benz. So, so far, they've raised $300 million. That was, guys, 2019. So 2020, uh, 2021, you'll see the prospectus. They're probably going to um, be double or triple the price that they were two years ago. So the business positioning was critical. A lot of people had lost money in battery companies from day one. They were clear that they weren't a battery company. They're actually a tech company making materials for batteries. Batteries are just a low margin market, but the materials have a very healthy market, a better product, and then higher sales. They're valued now at a billion, more than a billion dollars. Story playing did play a big role here because you had to capture the essence of the business in just 20 slides. So for those who want to know the winning deck, Peter Thiel, of course, recently covered about it. Peter Thiel actually had uh, had shown why he invested with just five hundred thousand dollars check with uh, Facebook, which in, in which which which, be, which of course became more than a billion dollars in cash. And the Peter Thiel Silicon Valley legend, Silent Nanotechnologies. What's the business here? Their product is a powder that replaces graphite powder in existing lithium ion batteries. The more efficiently you can store lithium, the less material you need for the same amount of energy. Silent Nano's material can store energy more densely, giving you more energy at a similar volume and weight. Silent reduces battery weight approximately 20%, increasing energy storage approximately 20% with its material, meaning all the vehicles will have the potential to go 20% further than anyone else's. Consider this. Every vehicle will need 15 to 20 kilos of this material. Think forward, you've got a market of more than 100 million vehicles every year. With 20 kilos per car, we're talking about 2 billion kilos all using this new material, which is the silent nanotechnology that they've produced every single year. They're going to fuel new air taxis. They're going to change even the way we travel, even the aerospace industry. So silent is growing 50% every year for the past five years. No indication of slowing down soon. Um, and then, of course, if you want to know more about this company, the funding history, take note. Uh, I took a look at Silent Nanotechnologies, $5 million, 15, 35, 69, $219 million. You've got Gene Bertishevsky and Alex Jacobs. And um, this startup is really going to be one of the best IPOs of 2021, dare I say. Um, there's no IPO date. Silent Technologies, let's take a look at the IPO price date. I just took, took a look. Um, 11 big things. The seismic saga of GameStop and Robinhood doesn't matter for me there. I want Sila. Sila Nanotechnologies. The funded. So three weeks ago, a new $4 billion VC fund, 25 Bay Area startup deals midweek. All right. So I can't read it because I need to pay another. Okay. It's a paywall. <clears throat> Let me see. Let me see. This is also great store dot. I like this store dot stock IPO. Very strong IPOs coming out 2021, guys. So um, I think the best is yet to come. Silent Technologies IPO news. Somebody shared to me the prospectus already. Um, 
uh, I'm looking through. Uh, I know about Sila Nanotechnologies. Even if I mean, uh, I secretly really wanted it to be a SPAC, but um, it's not going to be a SPAC. It's going to be an IPO. Sala Technology snooze. There, this this is it. Three weeks ago, they're going to fund their battery materials factory. Reveals what he learned from working for Tesla, market share. Um, a Silicon Valley battery materials has spent years developing technology. This is in TechCrunch, tech so at a lower cost. An end game will help with Amperex Technology Limited as well as automakers BMW and Daimler. So the valuation is going to be $3.3 billion. Told you it's going to be double or triple. But you know what? When it lists on the market, it's going to be $5 billion. The company was founded a decade ago. Um, Kuwatu with a significant participation, T. Rowe, 8VC, Bessemer, Canada Pension Plan, Sutter Hill Ventures, a Series F, so A, B, C, D, E, F. Silo Nano plans to use the funds, hiring another 100 people this year in North America, capable of producing 100 gigawatt hours of silicon-based anode material, which is used in batteries for the smartphones and automotive industries. So they've not revealed their location for their battery factory, materials factory. They want to produce this factory in 2024. That's why they need the plant uh, funding. And they want the plant to be um, materials to be produced in time for that 2025-2026 super boom of their electric vehicles. Guys, uh, it tells you why um, all of the Awesome 10X members, uh, free or inner circle, all have a major stake in this electric revolution, uh, whether it be battery makers, battery recyclers, lithium-ion suppliers, or even lithium itself, or of course, the electric vehicle, all the trillions of dollars of this ecosystem. This is really going to take you 10x. So uh, it took eight years, they said, uh, and 35,000 iterations to create a new battery chemistry. This is just step one. Any new technology to make a real impact in the real world has to scale, costing billions of dollars, and we know from our experience that building the production lines in Alameda, investing on, in our next plant today, will keep us on track to power cars, hundreds of millions of consumer devices by 2025. Do you know how big this is? This is the Internet of Things, guys. IoT. This is not just electric vehicles. When you are really enabling energy storage, you're going to enable billions of devices. And a lithium-ion battery today contains two electrodes. There's an anode on one side and a cathode on the other. Typically, an electrolyte sits in the middle acting as a courier, moving ions between electrodes when charging and discharging. Graphite is commonly used as the anode in commercial lithium-ion batteries. And uh, they've developed the silicon-based anode replacing graphite in lithium-ion batteries. Uh -huh. The opportunity is compelling such that everyone wants to be in. You've got Ford, GM, Daimler, BMW, Hyundai, Kia. All these electric vehicles wants to be part of this technology. Tesla is still coming out with their um, production of Model 3 and Model Y. Rivian is also coming out in an IPO, guys, this year. Uh, in short, the demand for batteries is climbing. Automakers are already looking for the next generation tech to just give them that competitive edge. And battery production will be growing from 20 gigawatts hour in 2010 to a 100x move, guys, by 2030. It's going to be 2,000 by 2030 gigawatts per year, or about 30,000. We're talking about, um, so 20 to 2,000 is 100x, and then from 100x to another 15x, or 1,500x increase on battery production, 30,000 gigawatts per hour by per year by uh, 2050. It's an automatic, um, I call them TOTGA. Totga in the Philippines is what you call the one that got away. So um, if you miss out, example, people say, oh, Netflix is my Totga. Oh, Amazon's my Totga. Oh, Roku is my Totga. Oh, Bitcoin's my Totga. Oh, Tesla's my Totga. You might actually feel one day, Sala Nanotechnologies is your Totga. Is it the one that got away or will you make it stay? Okay, next question. An IPO for EV battery maker store dot would be supercharged. Let's read this. Stordat is an Israel-based battery tech company developing quick charging batteries for EVs, drones, smartphones, and a range of other devices. So it may even be another opening to the EV boom. How can you invest in Stordot stock? Before getting how to invest, let's know about the EV battery market. Of course, the battery is expanding as big and as rapidly as electric vehicle adoption has been growing. The market was just $23 billion in 2017, and it's now going to be $84 billion, or roughly 4x move in just eight years. Or in this case, we're 2021, 
maybe another 3x. So um, that represents a huge opportunity for Storedot, but that's just only one of the company's target market. It can be used in drones, phones, electronic devices, which is be, which really is a strong market, by the way, because drones are going to be used for deliveries, e-commerce deliveries, packages for online shoppers. So this is what uh, Storedot does. Right now, Storedot is founded by Doron Myersdorf, Simon Litson, and Gil Rosenman. They're serving as the company's uh, executive roles. In 2017, they raised $60 million, again, from Daimler, Samsung. And in 2018, oil giant BP, British Petroleum, invested $20 million in a company. Other investors include Altair Capital, Rhodium, TDK, and Russian billionaire Roman Abramovich's Millhouse Capital. So Storedot is now gearing up for the mass production of five-minute charging EV batteries. EVs will be central in the effort to curb climate change. Therefore, fast charging batteries will be the promise to solve this issue. Many drivers shun EVs because they thought it's going to take them hours and hours just to charge those batteries. But those concerns may change if you've got Storedot. Storedot has produced samples of their fast charging EV battery showing potential partners such as manufacturing company Eve Energy. Stordot is aiming to mass produce their five minute charging car batteries by 2025 and hopes to partner with EV market suppliers to distribute their batteries. The company says that they can manufacture and currently use to make conventional lithium ion batteries and would show the cost same as lithium ion, making them highly competitive. Elon Musk said in January 18, 2021, battery cell production is the fundamental rate limiter, slowing down a sustainable energy future. This is a very important problem. Come work with us, Giga Texas, Giga Berlin. Let's work on battery. So Tesla battery, guys, engineers are really the prize here. Um, it's a 10x, 20x, 100x move. Take note that we've already got a 10x move in Quantumscape. We like Quantumscape solid state batteries. And then, of course, we are aware of Cat L. Where, yeah, um, your contemporary, contemporary Amperex. You've got your Panasonic. You've got your LG Chem. But uh, listen to me clearly. Listen to me clearly. Silent nanotechnologies and stored dot should be in your portfolio. If you're an awesome Phoenix member, free or inner circle, doesn't matter. It should be there in your portfolio. Um, right now, you've got Tesla, Enovate, Echion, QuantumScape, and Silent Nanotechnologies. It's going to go a long way in making EVs mainstream. Stordot wants to build a rival to Tesla's Gigafactory called One Giga, producing their fast-charging battery cells. It wants to build a plant in USA. When is the IPO date? I don't know. Um, but these IPOs in 2021 are where my money is going to be. Silent Nanotechnologies and, uh, and definitely Stordot. So I'm um, happy to say that both Silent Nanotechnologies and Stordot is actually invested already by companies like Daimler. So um, if you want to have a quick play um, before Silent Nanotechnologies explodes, take note that uh, you can actually buy from Daimler. Daimler is a listed company. Bessemer Venture Partners has it, but uh, we can't buy Bessemer unless you can help me find which SPAC of these companies will list them. Um, you know, because sometimes they could. But uh, happy to say that Daimler has these guys. Daimler owns Sila and Stordot. And of course, we like Proterra. So Daimler is actually doing its job very well. You not only have uh, a great company inside, but Daimler, in fact, is also a company that invested heavily well in where the best battery technologies are. So um, I think that the market is vastly undervaluing Daimler. And so take note, this is going from $6 to 19. Can it become a 25, 25 or a $50 name? My answer is a yes. Like, um, it's going to be slow, guys. It's not going to be very fast. The very fast move will, of course, come from Sila and Stordot. However, um, from just, uh, I don't know what you call it, just an understanding standpoint, you should be aware that Daimler is in a secular uptrend. It's not a dinosaur. Just the same as uh, why we said the GM was actually considered by others as a dinosaur and we disagreed. We disagreed because we knew that GM was actually investing in the right technologies and they were investing in the right electric vehicle startups. Now, you might not be the best electric vehicle out there, but if you know how to put your money in where the best are and you're diversifying your company's bets, 
you're still gonna do well. You're not gonna do 10x well, but maybe 3x well. So three times well, right? So um, so far, so good. 